What is up everybody? I'm excited to bring you this video today. I am on my way to Travis's house right now, last minute, to show you guys. He's gonna show you his taxidermy collection. It seemed like everybody really enjoyed that last waterfowl taxidermy collection of mine that I had put up uh, back in January, I believe. If you haven't seen that, I'll put that down in the description below. You guys can go check that out and uh, let me know what you think. But uh, this is gonna be of Travis's. Now, um, I'm gonna let him give you the details. He's gonna do the same thing, the facts, all that good stuff. But uh, I did wanna make one announcement before we get this video rolling. We do have some new apparel, guys, and we have some really cool stuff uh, that's available now. We got decals, we got some fishing gear hoodies, and we got hats, new hat styles coming in, and we also got some other, a uh, lot of t-shirts and long sleeves that have some really, really cool art on it. I think you guys would like, but the big announcement, and I'm pretty excited about it is... I happened to go to this one spot. It was like a clearing for, I think, a power went through there. That's right, guys. We started a podcast. It's called The MVM Show. It's on Spotify and it's on iTunes. Guys, do us a favor. Go check it out. Uh, give it five stars. Leave a review what you think about it. The first episode, very first episode, was with my dad, Larry Headings, and he gives the first-hand account. We give the first-hand account of a mountain lion attack that we experienced back in the day. And uh, luckily, we're still here to tell the story. So go check that out. We're on our way to Travis's. Let's check his mounts out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. What's up, man? Come in. Hey, guys, just wanted to show you guys all my uh, taxidermy work that I have. Some of it that I've done personally and some that have been done by, by my good friend Eugene Streakstra of Wildfowl Unlimited. So these are some of the birds that I've mounted. So this is my first California blue wing. So this is the Till Trifecta, cinnamon, green wing, and blue wing. I have shot all three of them in one day, as well as Talon, who you've seen on other uh, videos. He shot them all in one day. And I almost did it twice. I shot a blue wing and a cinnamon one day, and I didn't shoot a green wing, which is like one of the most abundant birds here in California. So, hey, it is what it is, right? All right, guys, here's a little waterfowl fun fact. A hen will lead her ducklings up to a half mile or more over land in order to find a water source for swimming and feeding. So a lot of times they say not to put like wood duck boxes right next to the water. All right guys, we're in my kitchen. My wife doesn't actually let me leave this here on the kitchen table. It's actually up on a shelf, a planter shelf above our, in our living room. So she is cool enough to let me put birds in here. Um, this is the first golden lion I've ever shot. I've killed more buffalo heads, but I put these two together. I just like the colors of them. I actually shot both of these off a little pond over by where I grew up. So it's kind of sentimental for me. Some of the first birds that I mounted, probably within the first 10. So that's why they're not the greatest, but hey, had fun putting them together. All right, here's a really strange fact. Although often referred to as a flock, a group of ducks can also be called a raft, team, or paddling. Yeah, mighty, this was a nice paddling of a flock of ducks over there, yeah. All right, guys, so this right here is a hen cinnamon. Now, this is one of the first standing waterfowl I ever mounted. That's why it's so flat. It should have like a nice round belly. But what's cool about this bird, this is my daughter's first bird she ever shot and it was like three years ago I believe I should have did a better mount than this right I mean my daughter's first bird but hey we got it and so this bird will always hold a special place in my heart not as flashy as a drake but still a cool bird all right guys another fun fact a duck's feet has no nerves or blood vessels this means that they do not get cold feet like some of us do, right? All right, guys, this is a really cool pintail. Um, Talon shot this one on a junior hunt. I believe he shot this one on his first junior hunt as a, well as another uh, pintail that I'll show you pretty soon. The next two birds that you'll see will be mounted by my good friend, um, Eugene Streakstra of Wildfowl Unlimited. I've worked with him, I've been with, back to about five times worked with the Eugene. Super cool guy, one of the better taxidermists I've ever seen as far as waterfowl is concerned. He's in all the special birds that I have, so. Thanks, Eugene. One of my favorite poses, the flushing pintail. This is that other pintail I was telling you guys about that Talon shot on his first junior hunt. But really a cool bird. I like, I love this pose. Just like the flushing look. And um, yeah, Eugene did a great job on this bird. Another little known fact. So people may not be the only ones who gray as they grow older. In a banding study of 1,700 redheads 
On the Laguna Madre of Texas, researchers found that the amount of gray feathers on a hen's head may provide an accurate prediction of age. Some hens eventually have so many gray feathers that their head appears almost white. You probably think it's a hybrid. This is my Ross Goose. The only Ross Goose I've ever killed. But a certain family member thinks that they shot it, when actually in reality I shot it. What was really cool was out hunting, and it was a foggy day. I seen this bird coming towards me, and I'm like, seagull. I'm like, goose, seagull, goose. I kept going back and forth. And it came in and I shot. This thing took off flying probably about 60 yards. I kept watching, I knew I hit it. And all of a sudden it just crumbled. Took off running across the pond, went over there and picked it up and I was ecstatic. Eugene also mounted this one, my very first Ross goose. Here's another fact, one I didn't even know. There's a lot of things I don't know. The only North American dabbler or diver that also breeds in South America is the ding ding cinnamon teal. Fubulus and black belly whistling ducks also breed on both continents. Hello class. All right, so today we're gonna have a lesson. Can anybody identify this bird? Yeah, I know, it's a hen mallard. But what's really cool about this bird, check out these super cool wings. Also called like snow capping or something like that. And my nephew Colton shot this bird. Didn't know what it was. Well, you know it was a hen mallard, but he comes home and I'm like, hey, can I have that bird? Sure, Uncle Travis, you can have him. Guess who wants it back? But he's not getting it. So all these birds on this wall, this is my flock mount that I'm doing. All these birds have significance or special meaning to me. Um, so this one's really cool because I've never seen one like this. Colin shot this one. This cool bird right here, Drake Mallard. What's cool about him? Cha-ching, cha-ching, bling, ba bling me and my dad, we were hunting a refuge that we had never hunted before. Our first time out there, this mallard come in. We both pull up, boom, boom, go over there. I'm like, it's banded. It was our first one. And I'm like, I got him. He's like, I shot two. So guess what? We had to get it mounted because we don't know who hit it. Maybe we both did, maybe I did, maybe he did. But it's banded. This right here, Talon's first mallard. I mounted this bird, not my pride and joy mount. But it's his first one. This right here is my first solo banded mallard. I was hunting with Colton. Uh, we had six mallards come in, four drakes, two hens, and they were flying over. And I'm thinking Colton's going to shoot the one on the far right. But he shoots one in the middle. So I swing on this one that I thought he was going to shoot. Boom. Went over there. It was banded. I'm like, maybe yours is banded. But unfortunately, his wasn't. Later on, he did kill a banded bird. That should have been mine, but they all should be mine because they're banded. All right, so this pintail right here was shot by Talon on another junior hunt. Pintails on junior hunts are special to me, I guess. So, gonna add a couple more birds in here. Gonna, when Talon shoots her first straight mallard, we're gonna put it up here. Um, we got one of her pintails that she shot, her first pintails. Might put that up here, and I'm gonna do one, shot two pintails, her first two pintails on this year's junior hunt. I might do one of those like just on a base mount that she can move around. I get one and then she can have one when she someday gets married in 50 years. If you guys didn't know this one. But the ground squirrel can be an insidious predator of duck eggs. Unlike large predators which destroy an entire clutch at once, thereby enabling the hen to re-nest, these rodents steal eggs one at a time over a period of several days. One study in Manitoba found that the ground squirrels destroyed 90% of the duck nest in the area. All right guys, I just did this for a customer. Finished it up just the other day. He's gonna, he has some stuff that he says really like uh, nostalgic stuff that he saved over the years old uh, shell boxes I think were his grandpa's, some old duck calls over his grandpa's. He's gonna put them down here on the shelf. But a stormy widgeon, really cool gawal. Love how this thing's got this two-tone head. Don't shoot a lot like that around there. And gatwalls are so underrated. I mean, I love how this looks right here. It's just such a cool feather pattern. Really an underrated duck. And of course, everybody's favorite. Who doesn't like a green head? I can shoot green heads all day long. I probably never get tired of it either. But this was a fun project. I made this backer thing out of some old fence boards um, that I had. Some old rusty nails. Thanks, Thomas, for the wood. It's time for another fun fact. In January 1999, a tornado and violent hailstorm deposited more than 3,000 dead waterfowl across a seven mile long swath in eastern Arkansas. I wonder if any of them were banded. I'd be out there looking. Don't look over there, guys. 
That's my mount. Video to come soon. All right, I've never shot one of these. Yeah, it's a snow goose, but it's a blue snow, blue face snow goose. And this bird was actually gifted to me by my good friend Eugene Streakstra. And everybody asked me, why is this thing hanging in my garage? And my answer is, mm, so people can see it when they come over. My garage is a mess right now, a total bombshell. People keep trying to like, oh, can I take this bird and put it in my house? And I'm like, nah. Garage. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a beautiful bird. And just love the colors on this. Someday I'll shoot my own. But until then, I come out here and I look at this one. Gentlemen and ladies. A duck's bill is specialized to help it feed in mud and water. The hard tip helps with foraging and a comb-like structure on the side of the bill strains water. I love spoonies, big lips. All right, who's into uniqueness? Now my style is unique, man. But in waterfowl, uniqueness is cool. And when you shoot something cool, you gotta send it to your taxidermist. For instance, pan over and check this baby out. Can you guys guess what this is? Uh, I think it's a, 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 a farm duck. No, actually, got a story behind this one. It was so cool. Out hunting with my dad and my nephew Colton, and I see this bird coming low across the water, solo, all by itself. Now, why was it by itself? I don't know. I wish there was a whole flock of them. But it's coming, I'm thinking, shorebird. Oh, it's like a duck. Shorebird, duck. About two foot off the water, it banks. I scream, albino, albino. The first shot's a complete whiff. My dad's standing there with his jaw down. Me, I'm looking, I miss. It's going dead away, 45, 50 yards. And I make a lucky tailpipe shot. Bird drops in the water. I scream, I shot an albino. I take off running. I beat the dog to the bird. Picked it up, I shot an albino. Well, it's not an albino, but it is unique. This bird has what's called leucism or leucistic. That's what they call it, leucistic. And you can see the feathers here are really frayed at the end. It's because this bird doesn't have any pigment or very little pigment in its feathers. I thought that I was gonna shoot the only one. Actually, I just mounted one not too long ago for a guy. He shot one. Um, but this is only the second one that I've seen in person. And probably the prize of my collection. So thank you all for tuning in today, checking out my taxidermy collection. Gonna be doing some more videos maybe on taxidermy in the future, some, some cool birds that some of my friends have shot, birds that have significance for them. So stay tuned and we're boom, out of here. <laughs>